Oh, right, all right, all right. It is time for another episode of the Florencio Files down here in the bottom right hand side. He's not on his beast mode account today. He is, of course, a macro king. Florencio coming in on his macro king account. He actually has been mentioning that he's been he's been working on his mechanics a little bit more, and he actually has been doing a lot more since he's been playing a lot of Terran. He's been kicking ass. He's also doing some pretty try-hard Stalker micro, pretty try-hard Roach Barrow micro. He's been doing some cool shit. Up here in the top left. <laughs> Nincom? So, the funny thing is, I, I don't know... This player's blocking the expansion. The only thing missing from this being nincompoop is poop, right? It's nincompoop. You, you guys know nincompoop, like the greatest insult of all time that no one's used seriously in like 73 years? You nincompoop. I remember when I was like a kid and my brother was like, I found out about this new insult, nincompoop. And I was like, <laughs> I just laughed. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean? He's like, it just means like an idiot, I think, but... It sounds great. And I was like, it does sound great, but it sounds ridiculous. Well, this is kind of fortuitous because Ninkum happens to be fighting against literally the master of poop over here, Florencio. I mean, Florencio is a sewer mermaid. He's basically the closest thing that any sort of Mr. Hanky-esque society would have to a god. You know, he's not really a god, more of like a minor deity kind of like a, you know, he's like, oh, I'm the emperor of the world and you guys have to pretend I'm a god. I'm clearly not, though. But still, if you combine Ninkum with Poop, or the God of Poop, surely we may end up with a Ninkum Poop style game. Which is probably a decent way to describe most of Florencio's games, and therefore I am excited. If you don't get excited by word salad like me, <laughs> are you guys even living life? Huh. Ugh. Drone is like, dude, I really wanted to block your expansion, what the fuck? <laughs> Comes up, sees that on the high ground, is like, fine! I'll build a hatchery here then. Reaper's gonna try and fight that. On the other side of the map, Queens do start up as the next step. His mind, a lot of gas is gonna start to pull off there. That hatchery chews up a lot of minerals and it doesn't really directly slow anything down. Unfortunately though, for Ninkum, Florencio is very happy to just stay on one base or even to float this off to a different expansion. He's not even building marines right now. This is the most Florencio thing ever. He's like, nah, don't need those. Just need me double factory tank to break out. Reaper's gonna come up into the main base, says, hey, why don't you have any defense? Is that because you built a hatchery on my side of the map? Taste my, taste my Gauss, my Gauss pistols. What are, are they Gauss pistols? What are they called? Uh, P45 Gauss pistol. Yes, she has two of them. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, 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 ow, ow, get away from my babies, you little fucker. Holy shit, did you see that? Was he even real? He just ceased to exist. It was like she, um, she shot him with like a phaser. You know, like, what was it, was it phasers? It was one of, one of those sci-fi shows where people just disappear when they get shot. I don't think it was phasers, um... Maybe it was one of the Star Treks where people just disappeared when they got shot. I remember there was one shitty sci-fi show where they like shoot you and the person just like just fucking phases out. And you're like, oh, that's about as lame as you could possibly make it. But OK, planetary in the main base, because remember, guys, that's going to help protect you from the hatchery over there. Florencio uh, safe as always. And he's going double reactor factory. What does he think he's doing? He hasn't even made an orbital. Of course he hasn't. This is going to become a planetary. So he's just using it to scout for now. Marine in the bunker. Armor. Is he just gonna mass widow mines? Because they don't they can't kill buildings. You also can't support four lanes at a time on one base. <laughs> Especially not without mules. Oh Florencio. Oh my god. Oh my god. So the Zerg is like, I better build some Zerglings. So when he tries to come down here to take his base, I can stop him. Uh, little does this Zerg realize they are playing into Florencio's hands. It's like, dude, you just need to drone. <gasps> Why? <laughs> oh, those lings get mega baited. Oh, they got catfished. Those Hellions just set up Tinder profiles. They're like, oh, yes, I'm a juicy creep tumor. I like getting eaten out by Zerglings and having a good time. 
those zerglings just came running into that tin today. Little did they know it was actually a trap. They got rolled. The Hellions and Marines took their wallets and kicked them back out into the gutter. Rather deadly. By the way, I love that he built two spores. Ninkum, Ninkum did. Um, this is already looking a little bit poopy. And that was to save the drones from the Reaper. Forgot to cancel them. So essentially lost two drones. And then built two spores at the quote-unquote normal timing in the bases anyway. <laughs> Nothing like a classic four spore crawler opening. Now, in Ninkum Poop's favor is building roaches now, but only two. You know your opponent's making Hellions. I guess he doesn't know their mass. Yes, he does. His Ling saw both reacted factories and he's building mass Zerglings. Oh my god. <laughs> well, he's making a whole lot of units that do splash damage, bonus to light, and are incredibly mobile, so you can't really surround them. Let's counter that with light units that rely on mobility and getting surrounds. This guy is, he must be a disciple of Florencia. Look at this. Amazing compositional choices here. Just look at that. They might even kill two Hellions for all of those Zerglings. Thankfully, he does pull back, but Ninkum does not know how to put the Roaches and Lings on a separate control group. Should definitely be engaging with the Roaches, not the Zerglings. More Roaches are out, though, so that might be enough. Oh, he doesn't block them at all. Uh-oh. And uh, I think at this point, Ninkum Poot realized his opponent's name may not have been completely truthful. He's like... Macro King? He's like, you are doing a one base eight Hellion dive. Are you not a Macro King? Wait. Ninkum's like, oh shit. I may have made some assumptions about this game. Behind this, of course, Flo is still building a ton of Hellions. He's going to go at a new command center. So let's have this expand up. But his economy has been quite slowed down. It was very important that he killed all those drones there. I think he got what? Oh, only three? Oh, he wounded a lot, but didn't kill many, did he? Uh, I guess he got some mining time, but yeah. Zerg is only on two bases. Uh, is now moving out to take a third, but I mean, we know how Zergling Roach goes into planetaries. Let's go to Ninkum's camera and look at him. He's still building a spy. He sees a planetary. Now let's watch his brain process. Let's see. Oh, that was actually pretty good. From the moment he looked at it to realizing let's not attack that with a handful of units. That was actually a pretty quick turnaround. I gotta say, I am impressed. Ninkum here goes around looking for a weak spot, says, okay, maybe not up. I don't know if that's a full bunker, this might not work, but you know what? Hellions aren't great versus roaches, so it maybe could. They're gonna run on in here, try and run past the bunker, then they run back, then they run in. Uh-oh, I don't think these roaches wanna be here, man. I don't think they're clear on what their orders are. They pick off two SCVs building buildings, and there's actually enough aliens in the planetary in the main. Oh, this is this is classic Florencio. You always think the wall off is the trap, but there's always a, another layer of defense behind it. Anytime you try to run past, like Florencio is all about setting up those uh, those trenches filled with sharp spikes. You know, he's all about the pot of boiling oil that he's gonna the cauldron of it that he's gonna pour over the edge on the uh, assailants as they try to climb up the ladders over the walls. Just saying, I'm pretty sure Florencio is a fan of any sort of like tower defense or siege defense game where you can set up like traps and layers of defense. He's 100% got that. Hellbat's coming forwards into Roaches with Roach Speed. Pretty good micro from Ninkum. Does minimize most of the Hellbat damage and should be able to clean that up now. Yeah, look at that. Well played by Ninkum. Uh, nice micro from Flo kind of keeps faking out like he's going to go for the drones and then turning around when the Roaches run up to him. Gets a few more Roaches than he might have. And at the tail end of that, it's equal work account. I mean, Ninkum's trying to drone up here. I do often wonder if there's like just a whole pop population um, of the StarCraft ladder who just, if they just built the habit every time they float 1500 minerals of just taking like three extra bases at once, just like boxing drones and going build a hatchery, build a hatchery, build a hatchery. I like, I wonder if they would all just jump like two whole leagues. Because I feel like, not every game it would matter, but like in the messy games, I feel like that's like such a game winning maneuver, right? Like Flo is so comfortable in the chaotic seas. Like he could be in a little one man kayak or canoe, some little shitty boat, some little dinghy. And he would be like in a big fuck off tempest and he wouldn't, he'd just smile and just roll with the waves and just, you know, go through them. I think a lot of players freeze up and freak out, but Flo, he's so good at expanding behind all of his layers of bullshit, man. Especially with Terran, I'm so impressed with his macro. I actually think the Macro King name is kind of true. As much as he's doing his janky-ass openings, 
He's got his third base up now. Normally, he'd, have, he'd even have another command center up by now. He's actually a bit lower than normal. Comes in with other Hellions now. If only he did that at the same time. But of course, Florencio, uh, his idea of doing a, a sort of one-two punch and attacking from multiple areas, for him, he believes that multi-prong is about attacking in one area um, and then once they've dealt with it, attacking in another. He believes that if you attack in two at the same time, the problem is that the psychological impact is halved. So basically, for Florencio, it's like, um, you know, like if a tree falls in the woods, but no one is there to, to see it, did it did it really happen, right? And that's the same thing. So Florencio has actually applied that to StarCraft because he's so much focused on the psychological impact of the game. His view is that if his opponent doesn't see their drones dying, it doesn't count. It doesn't, it doesn't demotivate them. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know, destroy their will to live. So for Florencio, he looks at it that way, where he just goes, hmm... I could have ran in and killed 20 drones then, but the reason I would have killed those is because he's distracted by other Hellions, which means these drones didn't really die. So like, he's he's absolutely the guy who, um, you know, Florencio's like, he's like the big bug splatter beast in, um, in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Like, if you wrap a fucking towel around your head, you, you, if you're walking through the sewers, there's a fucking mermaid creature that's there and it's like rubbing shit on its body. It's got a bar of shit that it's using like soap and it's like foaming up and it's like, it just turns and looks at you and you're like, oh, it's a fucking sewer mermaid. That is the moment where you just wrap a towel or pull your shirt over your head because if you can't see it, he thinks that he can't see you. So it's actually a foolproof defense. Um, those SCVs nicely hidden in the planetary. Man, he's got no mobile anti-air. Yeah, Flo's fudged. He's only got one turret here. If those muters kill that turret, this whole main base is gone. Ooh, the bunker actually helping out a bit. The muters are going to fly over into the massive turrets. That base is undefended. No. He's so horny for the Banshee. He flies through the turret. Unde barely defended base. Undefended. Okay, he does go back now. I cannot believe he turned around to chase those Banshees. <laughs> Those Banshees are going to do big... If you're going to turn around, you should have done it all the way, buddy. Man. Oh, God. God. No overseers. No spores. He's got two spores in the main, two in the natural, none in the third. The Banshees are having an absolute bloody orgy of drone death right now. The overseers are trying to make, but he's going to lose most of his queens by the time they're done. He's losing so many workers. Flo here using those Banshees. He says, okay, I might lose this base, but I'm going to take out a ton of your drones in response. Unfortunately, a few of these Banshee attacks going into the Extractor are getting missed on those drones. Does finally take him down. Planetary goes down there, as do those turrets, which never got cancelled. Flow's a bit broken. This Zerg has five hatcheries. If this Zerg just holds down the drone key, they have an easy win in this game. But you can see the Zerg here is massing muters and making burrow right now. The muters are finally coming home. Where the fudge are the queens? There are like still six, eight queens out and they're all just fucking around. <laughs> what are you doing? They're all just gossiping. Oh my god, did you see how fat Fiona got? Oh my god, she's such a fat pig. I bet. Oh my god, she. you know when she injects lava, only two come out? Oh my god. <laughs> she's so fucking ugly. Uh, that's Fiona, by the way. Of course, the fucking, fucking high energy green hit point queens are making fun of the one who's actually been out there roughing it out, defending the drones against the babies and not being a selfish fucking witch. But those four bloody don't even defend their base. Oh! Oh! Muters just flew into two Widow Mines and a bunch of missile turrets. Oh my god, a lot of them died, but a bunch do survive. Thankfully for Ninkum, does get a bit of a splattering. That I think he's evolving to Ninkum poop at this point. But as I said, Ninkum's droning up these five bases. I, I don't know if Flo can do anything about that. Flo's pretty screwed. If the Zerg just gets a big enough economy. There are already 12 queens out, though. That's a big problem for Ninkum. Because queens aren't actual good fighting units, but there's roaches kind of defending the bases. You've got muters and overseers flying around. You know, you've just got to stop relying on massing muters when you know that your opponent's putting widow mine traps everywhere. You've just got to make sure you stop building muters when you know your opponent's building widow mine traps everywhere. You've just got to stop making mass mutalisk and relying on all of your money being in one clumped up unit, which you're not going to watch and fly into a widow mine trap, into a widow mine trap. <sighs> Sorry, guys. Oh, I um just blacked out for a bit. Did I, I might have, did I have a prophecy? Did I say anything? Did I? Oh, oh, looks like, okay, good micro here. Ninkum cleans up those. Uh, let's pick off that as, okay, spots it. So as long, you just avoid that, surely. Surely you would just avoid that. Okay. 
Okay, could have been worse. Could have been worse. <laughs> I thought we were about to see someone royally fuck up. Whoa! Oh my god! No, no, leave! Just leave! Just leave! Just leave, please! Why are you still here with it? Ten more muters? Oh, fucking jeebus. Okay, actually, someone asked after one of the previous flow fast casts, they said, Pig, what is the best way to counter Widow Mines after we see a Zerg just headbutt into Widow Mines? Number one, stop fucking F2-ing your army. If you can use control groups, that's great. But also if you can use things like boxing and clicking to spread things out, that's great. Number two, <laughs> Banelings are actually the best answer to mass Widow Mine. You just need to grab three Banelings, run them in and detonate them or stand them on top of the Widow Mines. You don't even need to detonate them because the Widow Mines will shoot the Banelings and detonate them on top. So Banelings are one of the best tools. Lurkers outrange them. Hydras outrange them. Technically, Ravagers can bile them down from afar, but that's very, very advanced micro, right? Uh, you can fungal them, uh, kill them with Broodlords from out of their range as well. The problem with that is if they have other units with them, your Broodlords are going to automatically shoot those other units. You need to kind of target fire the Widow Mines. But realistically, um, the number one way to deal with them is to not fucking walk into them. Like, that is it. If you think about it, your opponent's investing in an army and its job is to go there and just sit. It's like one of those sea creatures that, like, pretends it's like a mollusk or something. And then, like, or like I don't know, it pretends it's like a fucking piece of seaweed and it's just got to wait all day and hope something comes and tries to eat that seaweed so that it can snap its shores on it, you know? It's not really, if you think about it, when we've got brains and uh, mental flexibility and all the rest, it's probably not the best way to win the game. Does this Zerg use control groups? Muters on one, Zerglings on two, Queens on another control group, six hatcheries, 67 drones, massive income advantage. Oh! He doesn't even raise the wall. He doesn't want to. He's got... <laughs> Sometimes when I'm walking around the neighborhood, I have an urge. If I see someone's door open or you can see right through someone's window, I always want to watch. Like I've got that, that voyeuristic urge. I'm just curious. Oh, no. God. That could have been worth, worse. The fourth one was anything. So anyway, I was going to say, right, so sometimes I have the urge to just like, if a door is wide open, I always want to like, if I just walked in there and just started chatting to someone in their house, would that be weird? I remember I used to live in a share house and it was pretty fucking shitty and it was right next to the library so people always treated it like pro like public property. We we randomly um once we had we would have like stray cats just walk into the house and we'd be like what are you you're in out what um the, the cat lady in the neighborhood would like just walk into our backyard all the time. I remember one time a pregnant woman just knocked on our door she's like I'm pregnant. And we we're like what? She's like can I use your bathroom? We're like sure. <laughs> like this is like a, people just treated it like public already. Every night they'd be like drunk people vomiting on our driveway but like having their really loud deep and meaningful conversations like I just don't know if he loves me. Blah. And we'd be just like open our window. I'm like I'm trying to sleep and like you're sitting in our driveway and they're like oh is this not like the public fucking property. So I Anyway, I experienced a lot of that on the receiving end, but then I think it's maybe opened up that thing where I want to do the same thing, see what's inside. And I think those Zerglings just found out, like that's that's literally what I imagined would happen. And the one thing holding me back is I feel like it would be the journey those Zerglings had. They see the door open and they're like, oh, let's just go in and fucking have a look. Let's see what's in this person's house. They run in this fucking widow mine bunker, widow mine, widow mines. So they run to the, down here, the planetary, they go, shit, they run to the left. There was more widow mines. <laughs> they run to the back of Vikings. Land. It's literally like you stepped into a fucking horror film, you know? Suddenly you try to go back out the front door and there's a thick fog. You hear a bell ringing and you just see the shadowy shape of the fucking pyramid head with a giant 12 foot fucking two handed sword. And you're like, did I just step into Silent Hill? That is why you never run past Florencio's front line of defense, because there is always layers of crazy dudes who want to stab you with needles and give you hepatitis just waiting in the next room. Turn around and run out immediately. Oh, there's more Widow Mines there. There's more Widow Mines there. This Zerg is still actually not got a crazy bank. He's going to try and get the Widow Mines, but one of them, two of them fire. Oh, oh my God, you absolute fucking monkey. 41 muters have gone down. He's gonna he's gonna replace it with more muters. 
Okay, you've gone full nincompoop at this moment. You you may have been born into submarine 19 minutes and 32 seconds ago as nincom, but you are now officially a nincompoop. A guy sitting on 56 drones when he could have 100 could be rolling anything. Banelings, ultras, brood lords, vipers, and instead is opting for only mutalisks against a Terran who has just got mass widow mines. Look at this. Florencio is trying to clear creep that is on his doorstep. Look at the Zerg's vision. Now look at Florencio's vision on the minimap. Oh my god. If he wins this game, it is purely off the back of this Zerg being absolutely hollow-brained. I, I mean, honestly, there is only one way to describe the sound that happens when you knock on this Zerg's head. What is he doing? He's once again flying through Widow Mine Turret. What are you doing, you absolute psychopath? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Just a second. I've just cast a level three telekinetic connection to Nincompoop. I've just connected my body to his so that there is now an echoed response between the two of us. So we're going to do a quick experiment. We're going to find out how grooved or smooth Nick and Poop's brain is. Let's give it a go. Um. Okay, uh, I don't know if there's anything inside. I think that may actually be completely hollow. I think we're talking about literally completely fucking hollow. Like, I don't think there was any sign of anything in there. And that sounded really fucking hollow, right? What? Oh my god. If these mutants with that, no. Oh my god. What? <laughs> ah! 82 mutalisks have died and 192 zerglings. And at this point, it's like, well, I better use those roaches. It's still building mutas. Against literally only Thors, Widow Mines, and Vikings, is still only building mutas. I mean, I've seen some one trick ponies in my time. I've seen some muta boys. I've seen some roach boys. I've seen some zealot boys. I have seen some <laughs> some eight racks bio all in boys. But by golly, have I never seen a Zerg throw so hard with their absolute commitment to build the one unit that their opponent is hard countering. No GG, no GG. How could you not give that a good game? You just lost 95 mutalisks like an absolute monk. You ran into Widow Mines repeatedly. This was just ridiculous. Let's watch that last fight again. We can't just finish it like that. <laughs> Look at this terrible 21 minute unupgraded Thor push with seven Widow Mines. All the Lings get evaporated. All the Muters get super wounded. The Vikings plus the Thor Splash and auto turrets. And these mutas just get annihilated. Oh, oh. Brutal. Brutal. <laughs> I, I, there's so many people in chat just went all caps. What the hell, dude? You just fucked with me so hard. Let's get the shit out. I'm sorry, guys. I know that sound effect. The first time I literally was downloading that sound effect and testing it and i actually thought someone was knocking on the window because i was i was nowhere near the front door and i was freaking out in my room it's such a it's such a good sound effect isn't it <laughs> dude let's go back to some of the best of moments in this game because this was honestly just insane look at the units lost tab dude Thirty thousand to ten thousand. that's insane what an absolute idiot i've why would you still be... If he just made Ravages... Like, 10 Ravages beat that army. <laughs> Let's go back. This is so great. It's like... I was like, it's two base versus five. You can't lose from here, surely. Like, there's just too much map control, creep spread. I love this. The Roach is running. They're like, wait, why is there... Is there planetary in your main? Oh, god damn. Oh, that was so funny. <clears throat> that was insane. Um... <laughs> the not creeped you creeped some of you guys out but yeah let's let's find those 
Mutas because they, they ran into the Widow Mines repeatedly. This was truly glorious. Guys, if you're enjoying the content, please do check out the Patreon. We've just revamped it with a whole bunch of new tiers. And yes, if we do get enough support, total every bit joins to try and head towards getting the, the big goal, which is, of course, for me to create an OnlyFans. You may not see my naughty bits, but there may be some moist bacon photo shoots that may be involved. It may be incredibly low effort, but we'll do it. We'll do it. I'll also start selling bacon water, where it's basically the same as bath water, but, you know, it's it's just like I, I, I take a photo of me bathing with a few strips of bacon in there. Um, it'll be kind of disgusting. It'll be kind of like a how-to basic sort of aesthetic, you know, where you're kind of vomiting as you watch and you're like... Whoa. Like, you see the 37th time he slaps some raw chicken or an egg on his bare thigh, and you're like, ugh, this is freaking me out, man. So these muters, this Zerg player was so hilarious. He's like, all right, five base versus two. There's only one way I win this. Running mutalisks into widow mines. I like it as well. He's like, okay, I pulled back. Let's build more widow mines. <laughs> oh, I, would, I just want to see it again. There's just something so therapeutic about watching people run into widow mines, you know? Like, look at that. Gets a gas. Not bad. Oh, here we have that moment where the Zerglings run in the door. Hey. Oh, this is too good. Like, let's just see what's in the house. No. Oh, maybe maybe not that. Maybe over here. Maybe we'll go over. No, no, don't, don't go in there. Oh, my God. There's a dude. There's a dude strangling himself. He's got the... He's tied the... the he's touching himself, you know. <laughs> That's what this, the reaction to Zergs out there is. You run into someone's house and there's like... There's just a naked dude playing guitar. And he's wearing a sock on his dong. And you're like, what? And he's like... Do you like partying? <laughs> You're just like, run, get the fuck out of here. Of course, Ninkum had the opposite reaction, which was let's invite all my friends over. Ninkum's the, Ninkum's the guy who walks into a place that is clearly a crack den, says these these seem like cool people and texts his friends the address and tells them to come over and, and have, have some fun. Like, <laughs> you're just like, oh, okay. Yeah, you you got those genes where, you know, in in nature, your your genes would be killed off. Like, no offense. But you're literally the sort of person we should not be keeping alive. Like, you're... Ugh, Darwinism has failed at this point, and it is because of players like that, Zerg. GG, well played, Florencio. That was an epic comeback. You managed to hard counter those muters harder than they've ever been counted before. 95 mutalisks killed in an epic comeback. GG, well played, mate. Pew, pew.